yo, yo, it's the 1409 podcast. I go by the name of KT. It's your boy Guadalupe Swirl. And welcome to our hundredth episode. We made it all the way to episode 100. You know what I'm saying? You know, we got very special guests in here tonight. The Texas real estate king, the founder of the largest independent black owned real estate brokerage in the state of Texas, the whole state of Texas. That's major. Hey, co founder of Brooks and Davis Apartment Finder. You know what I'm saying? Got Larry Brooks in here. How you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good, fellas, man. I appreciate being here. And the first thing I want to say, it is an honor and a pleasure to be a part of your 100 episode, man. Like, I know how impactful that is and how big that number is when it comes to the, the, the podcast, the YouTube world, man. So, thank you, thank you, thank you guys for allowing me to share your platform um, as your 100 episode. Yeah, thank you for coming on, for real, for real. And shout sure. out to Prime Real Estate Network as well. I see you got I see you got your episode in the background right there with Mr. Davis. Yeah, 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 man. We've been we've been we pushed out this past week. We ran our two hundred and twenty third episode, so it's been good, man. Like no no doubt about it. That's where I know where it is when you guys are putting in this work. A lot of people don't see the behind the scenes, the the ability to have to put out so much uh, content so quickly, man, just to grow your platform. Man, I, I commend you guys on that. Hey, we appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Y'all doing the thing too, though. You said two hundred. You over two hundred episodes in. That's yeah. That's major yeah. right there. Thanks. Put in that work, man. Thanks, I appreciate you, love. Hey, so we got we got a little intro out of the way. We're gonna get more to you, but before we do that, let's get into <laughs> these shots. No doubt, man. Hey, hey, like I tell you guys earlier, don't judge me. I'm a little bitty bottle. I got caught in the. I got caught in the traffic over here by the office, so I stayed here. Oh man, we popping big bottles. <laughs> popping big, big bottles. bottles. <laughs> <laughs> I got my pour already. I'm gonna I'm have yeah. this. Ain't gonna be my last though. I got, like, <laughs> this might be my last. Yeah, this might be my last in this one. Oh I'm yeah, not, you I, take I, like, you say almost gone, man. I got another bottle, but it's in the kitchen. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, what you going to cheer to, Mr. Brooks? You the guest, so uh, we let you. Uh, listen, man, it's monumental. We cheer to 100, 100 times, a thousand more, and let's just keep getting it, man. So, to the 100 episode of the 1409 podcast, baby. Yes, sir. Let's get to hey. it. Let's get it. Ah, yeah. It like a little good J-Mo to get that padded we're going right. Yeah, that Jameson smooth, man. Yeah, yeah, that's my go-to, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. stocking that old Jamo, so I'm happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so we we do a little trivia after we do the shot. So we okay, got little, we got a little trivia question for you. I, I'm just freestyling this off the dome. You from Houston, right? H time, yeah. All right, so what what year? What year was the Super Bowl? In Houston, the oh man, <laughs> um, and that's a good question. We just had one recently in uh 2016. I no, yeah, 2016. I think it was no 2017. We just had one in 2017. Super Bowl in 2017. Damn, we had a Super Bowl in 2017. Uh, I'm talking about the one before that. I think it was oh, the one. <laughs> I'm talking about the one with. I can't say who it was with. You figure out the year. I'm talking about no, no, that. no. The only one we had before that, I believe, was the Patriots. The Patriots in um, was it, were you talking about the one with the Patriots? I'm talking about the, the one Patriots. at Reliant Stadium. You're not gonna remember the one with the Patriots, man. Y'all are little, this one was that one was years ago. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna remember it. You gonna remember it, Texas? Who and who was that one? That one had to be in like oh, I was out of school, so it had to be like oh two, oh three. Is oh four. Oh four. Oh four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I think that was the one with the Janet Jackson, the Janet Jackson thing going on. No, that wasn't with us. We that was in Jacksonville. That was that in Jacksonville. That wasn't in the H. But I remember watching that one when uh when uh Justin Timberlake and uh Janet did that thing. I was I was watching that Super Bowl for sure. Oh damn, y'all did have one in February twenty seventeen. I was talking about the other one though, the one before that. Yeah, so I kind of wanted to trivia based off the first question, baby. You know yeah, what? you got you yeah, got you, it right. <laughs> yeah, you, got it, you got it right. But look, but look, right. Man, look, I don't even want to make today about me, man. Today is about you guys. So I want everybody that's tuned in. 
I'm doing something special today for my guys. So y'all make sure y'all go like and subscribe this YouTube, like and subscribe to the YouTube page, man. I'm giving away hundred dollars for the hundred episode. But what I'm gonna do is I'll just break it into five different cash apps. So go down, make sure you go in, like and to me, so like and to subscribe this to this one. And then in the comments area, put your cash app, and then I'll let my guys pick five people randomly, whatever way they want to do it. And uh, I'm gonna cash app y'all. Oh, that's hey. major. That's major. Let's go, baby. This is a big deal. We got this hundred episode. We're making this a big deal. It's a big deal for sure. All right, yes, I did sir. some research. I did some research on the damn Super Bowl. It was in Houston. It was it was the one with Janet Jackson. It was the Panthers and the Patriots. Yes, ah, that's what I was saying. I, I was remember. in sixth grade. I was in sixth grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the one then, no doubt about it. I remember the. I know the Patriots was a part of it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are the three things? Hold up, before we do that, go ahead and say what you said again about the cash app thing. Say it one more time. Cash app, man. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, it's a 100 episode. I'm going to give away $100. And basically, we'll just give away 520s to, to people that go in. It's going to be random. So all I want is everyone that's tuned in, everyone that's going to listen to this, I want you to go like and subscribe, the 1409 on YouTube podcast, and uh, put your cash app in the comment section. And uh, these guys will choose somebody. So it's going to be random. So it ain't going to be the first five. It might be number 20. It might be number 100. So put your cash up in there. These guys will choose sometime after the episode. And I get you guys cashed up. For sure. For sure. For sure. All, All, love. Love. All love. So what are three things people may not know about you? Uh, man, three things people won't know about me. Uh, I read about 24 books a year. That's something. Like 24? I read 24, I read about 24 books a year. I try to get about two in a month. So I read about 24 books a year. Um, what else some people might not know about me? Uh, I'm the first person in my family to go to college, go to a four-year university and finish. And um, I guess since I'm on that lines, I'm the first person, um, uh, let's see, first person to go to family. Oh, a lot of people don't know that while I was in college, I double majored. So I have a marketing and general business degree. So none of these things ever come up in, in like real conversations. So because I do. So, um, yeah, those those are three things that people don't know about me or that they may not remember about me. Trailblazer. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey. All right. You, know, you want to share a little bit more about your background? Like. Yeah, you know what I don't mind at all, man. It's a, so a lot of a lot of times because I, I'm I'm like, shoot. At this point, I'm 30 years removed from the way that I grew up, and so a lot of, a lot of people don't know that I'm from the hood. I grew up in, in, off of MLK right here in South Park in Houston, Texas. Um, got it out. The term nowadays got it out the mud. I literally got it out the mud, man. I did everything when I was in uh you know growing up. I mean, I did what everybody else did. I just had a the only difference was is I had a praying grandmother and I just I didn't I didn't get the severe consequences as everybody else when mistakes were made. So my grandmother was a praying grandmother, was always there. My grandmother was the very first entrepreneur that I ever met. So my grandmother, um, she was a cool cup lady. Cool cup, pickles, candy. Like my we was, we was a sweet shop at my house. My grandmother was the first entrepreneur I ever met. Um and so that hustle was built into me at a young age, man. So I literally uh didn't know it was called entrepreneurship at the time, but I saw my grandma getting into, you know, making money that way. And so even when I got into cutting grass at six years old and, and finding my way to save, like, I mean, I, I've been saving money since I was six. So, uh, man, that's just a little bit. But as we get into it, man, I'm going to drop some dimes about how I got to where I got to and, you know, some of the consequences that I may have uh, encountered while doing it. But I've been blessed, man. I've had I've had a, uh, a, um, a prayed up life, a favorite life, no doubt about it. Facts already, already. So, what what would you say uh, is the most challenging thing you had to overcome in life? Shit, believe it or not, getting out of the hood and not being a statistic. That's that's, that's one of the you know it's funny because I was telling to telling a friend the other day. I just remember the relief of making it to twenty five because my entire life I never thought that I would see age twenty five because of the way we was running the street, the things we was doing. Um, I just, you know, it was just one of those things. I grew up doing the, the Tupac and Biggie era. So, you know, I always looked at Tupac as a big bro. I listened to his music when I was doing what I was doing. And, um, you know, I just, the biggest thing was just the, the opportunity of getting out of the hood. And so the thing for me is when I, during my time 
you got out of the hood because you either had two parents, they had great jobs and they poured into you. Um, you had, uh, which was rare in the hood. You had, um, you was a great rapper. You know, I came up with Kiki and he went, we went to the same high school briefly. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Guru Yu, which was a powwow manager and good friends of mine. So those guys, you know, they were great at the industry. Or you was either, you was a great athlete. You was an amazing football player or you was an amazing basketball player. I was blessed enough to be an amazing football player. I was in the, you know, I got a, I got a full scholarship, and that's rare. Like kids go and play football for from middle, from from elementary to through high school, and then they don't get off with that full scholarship. I was blessed enough to to have an opportunity to to get a full scholarship that got me out the hood. So, uh, yeah, I would say that would probably be the biggest thing for me. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. What what college did you did you uh, attend? Stephen, I ended up going to Stephen F. Austin. I visited a few schools, but um, Stephen F. Austin, historically white university, uh, about three hours away from Houston, it was ideal for me. You know, they offered me a full ride. They, at the time that I even visited them, I hadn't even took like some of the tests you need to take in order to get into college, the SAT, SATs, and all of that. And they promised me they was like, look, regardless of how you did, we're gonna put you on a Prop 48. And uh, Prop 48 was like, even if you didn't make the grades. They would still give you a full scholarship your first year and to allow you to get into it. So when they put that on the table for me, it was hard for me to say no. Plus, it was super impressive, man. I don't know if y'all ever seen the movie program. Plus, they got people announcing your number one things. Um, uh, you know, it was, just, it was just an amazing opportunity. So, yeah, I ended up choosing Stephen F. Austin, man, and went down there. Matter of fact, the guy that sat in my living room and had dinner with my grandmother that got me to go to school there, uh, was the head football coach for Cam Newton when they won the national championship at Auburn. So Gene Chizik was the, the the gentleman that sat in my living room and recruited me that followed me around for months and, and asked me to get to come to Stephen F. Austin. So, you know, I, I was around good company when I first got there. Yeah, that's dope right there. That's in Nacogdoches, yeah. right? That's right, Nacogdoches. <laughs> People try to say it. But... <laughs> Texas, neck, hey man, listen, I love them neck, the, the, that neck, man, that neck was nice to me. <laughs> uh, I, I know some people I went to school with that work at that school now, so then, yeah, that's how I knew it was at. And then out of okay. San Antonio, they got Nacogdoches Road, it's a long ass road and shit, so. <laughs> <laughs> <No> <laughs> Just like that Nacogdoches name, man, no doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's dope, though, yeah. You connected, you connected out here, man, it's a small world. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. For um, real. What, what, what? At what point did you get into real estate? You went to college for football. How'd you go from football to real estate? I know, man. So growing up as a kid from the hood, the only vision you ever had is that you didn't want to do that. Like you, like you saw, you saw the money, you saw the um, you took part in getting the money the way we got it back then. And um, I always dreamed of having a suit on. Like, I always was like, man, I want to wear a suit and tie when I go to work. And um, so happened when I would go home for, for college breaks, a little winter, mess, winter messers. My best friend at the time, his sister and, bro and brother-in-law owned a mortgage company. So I entered, I entered the real estate space, seeing it through mortgage. So I would go and do, like, little back end processing work. And while I'm sitting in the office, I'm like, it's black people coming in. They got nice cars, making money. I'm looking at some of the checks they picking up. I'm like, What's real estate again? Because no one had ever exposed me to it. When I was in school, you had police come up there. You had firefighters come up there. But you ain't had nobody come up there talking about no real money like real estate. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep up with this. And so I went part time work there doing while I was in college, man. So that exposed me to the real estate industry and uh, on the mortgage side. And so uh, while I was in school, I went in and paid for getting my mortgage license. Because back then, you didn't have to take a test. You just to pay for your mortgage license. So I was just going to, you know, just have it as a side gig if the NFL didn't work out. Because, of course, you know, when you're a kid, you playing sports, you just know that's the, that's the end destination <laughs> mm -hmm. professional athlete. And that's how I was hustling at the time. And so um, ended up not going, uh, ended up after I got done with college, um, a buddy of mine, the same buddy, he had, he had left Sam Houston a few years early. He just kind of was done with it. You know, he, he had got exposed to that money and he saw it so at like 20 years old, we driving Navigator, big old house in Greatwood, next door neighbor is Yolanda Adams and Steve Francis. And um, one night we was at this club called Club Roxy, and he dabbed up uh, this uh, this dude named uh, at the time his name is Antoine. I'm not gonna say his name. No, I'm not gonna put it out there. 
But he dabbed up a NFL cat that played ball currently. And he, uh, my, my boy was like, he was fearless. He was like, man, you did a great job, blah, 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 super job at this and that. My dude was like, um, he was like, I'm in real estate. If you decide to ever relocate back to the city, I'd love to help you out. But he took him up on the offer. And in three weeks, I seen my dude close a deal. He did the mortgage and the real estate side and made 45 grand. I was like, man, this company is offering me 45 grand for a whole year. And you just made it in three weeks? Let's see what this real estate game talking about. And I started my classes, man. And how long how long the classes took? For me, I took them in the weekend, so I was done in 30 days. So every weekend, at that time, you could take them every weekend. So at that time, I took them every weekend in some night classes. It was me and another buddy of mine. His name was Dre. And we both was, we was all three roommates. We had moved back and moved in with my guy. And uh, we was all three roommates. And we had this whole vision of this big company that we was going to build together in real estate. And, um, we took them over the weekend. Um, it took me, I passed it on my first time out, low scores, but I still passed it my first time out, man. And, and that was 20, 21 years ago, man. I've been in real estate ever since then. So at what, at what point did Brooke and Davis become the largest independent black owned real estate in Great uh, brokerage in Texas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we started rocking that number about two years ago. We came in and started headbanging about two years ago with that. Me and Michael, um, and two years ago, we were, we, um, 13 years ago, we partnered up 13 years ago, myself and my business partner, Mike. So 13 years ago, that was around 2008 when the market busted out. And so I had just opened up my own company called Brook Star Properties. And me and Mike had always masterminded. Okay, I real estate. I was kind of finding my way. I was like, man, I'm going to start my own brokerage firm. Opened up an office and the market bottomed out. So loans weren't going through. I had all this office space. I had just spent $30,000 putting together. And Mike was always a good friend. So I was like, listen, you, your lease is almost up where you at. How about y'all come, you and your team come over here and share some office space with me. And um, we split the bills. And we did that for a whole year at the end of it. I liked the way that he did business. He enjoyed the way that I did business, man. And we just built Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. Split it straight down the middle. Um, I handled everything dealing with buyers and leases. And he handled everything dealing with marketing properties and selling. And uh, 13 years, I mean, 13 years later, man, we're still here. And uh, knocking out the ballpark, man. We 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 we, we doing our thing. Oh man, that's for sure. Love, love to see it. Love to see it, bro. Appreciate yeah. it, man. It, it's exciting for us, man. We, you know, the specialty that we offer is that we teach and train other realtors. So I'm no longer a producing agent. Michael is no longer a producing agent, but we teach and coach and train other realtors how to go out and either one day build their own brokerage firm or at least give them time freedom so they can do the things that they want to do in their life. Okay, so I want to I want to be a new realtor. How do mm -hmm. I get enrolled in some of those classes? No doubt. Well, look, this is what I say first. First thing I think you should do is you go to LarryWBrooks.com. You click on the link that's going to allow you to schedule a free appointment, a free um free time to interview with me, right? So all I want to do is the interview process is give you the expectations of what's about to take place. I help you figure out what school you want to go to. I prefer Champion School of Real Estate. They got a high pass ratio. They're touchable. They're friendly. I, that's where I took my classes at. Most of my agents uh, took their classes there. And so um, I walk you through the process of taking your classes. After you take the classes, then um, then you're able to actually start to practice real estate. But beforehand, I get you involved in our affiliate program so that you can kind of, so we can help you when it comes to your studying and stuff like that. Yeah, hey, that's that's no right there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we just wanted to win, man. I, a lot of people always ask me what made me decide to build out a brokerage firm instead of just continue to make a bunch of money by myself. Because a brokerage firm is hard. You know, I could have stayed in with my license up under somebody up the team and just kept making money here and over fits. But I got tired of going into rooms with 400 realtors and only nine black realtors out of it. So, man, I was just like, I need more people that look like me in this room. And so that became the process of me and Michael building our own team and just continue to expose people to real estate. Because even when I go to career fairs and I'm talking to high school students or middle school students or even elementary school students, I'm like, real estate is a real thing. You know, about the sign. Like I, I love being able to tell people about real estate, even just coming from the licensee point, because no one ever told me that this lane existed. And if they had, a, I probably would have got my license at 18 and, you know, was making some moves that way. Ooh. Facts. Yeah. So, so eighteen is the minimum age to get the real estate license. 
Yeah, yeah. You get that mug at 18, man. And it's crazy because the earlier, the, 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 the quicker you can get exposure, and then the quicker you can, if you, real estate is a networking business, man. So you just really got to get people to buy into, to want to do business with you. What we learn and trade, the learn, the things that we learn how to do, they're not difficult. People teach, we can teach and coach you how to do those things, but it's really important for you just to, 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 to have no fear or feel comfortable and confident in yourself. When you're in yeah, man. Oh, man. So, what, what, in your words, for the listeners out there, what would you say the difference between a realtor and a broker? There's not much of a, a practical difference. And when I say practical, meaning like the way that they do business, other than typically a realtor, uh, most realtors that don't get their broker's license, they haven't taken them, they even haven't hit all the qualifications like closed enough transactions, went back and uh, taking more classes in order to take the test to get their broker's license. So that's what happens with most realtors. But they are able to do the same job, with exception of one thing. As a real estate broker, I'm able to hold other realtors' license. So I got more education. Um, I've uh, been in the, typically been in the business longer. And then now I'm able to say, uh, hey, KT, you got a real estate license? Let me hold it. I can hold it for you for a small fee or something of that matter. So that's the biggest difference between the two. I always tell people, when you get in the real estate game, um, somebody got to be the pimp. Somebody got to be the And at the end of the day, <laughs> be the pimp in the beginning. You know, <laughs> we all go through it at the end of the day. So the broker gets to be the pimp in the beginning. You got to pay him to hold your license or to teach and train and coach you in the game. And then someday you want to be that one or you're going to be making enough money you could care less about having a broker. So uh, what would you say are more the uh, pros and cons of being a broker? Uh, responsibility, man. Being a broker is responsibility. You have got to be able to put out fires. And so I always tell people like, like 14 years ago, I lost my hot head. Now, that's heavily because of my son, but the one thing that I always say is that you have got to be putting out fires. And when I say putting out fires, there's going to be things that's going to take place and you might want to snap or you might want to, you know, um, when your agents come to you and they tell you how somebody is did, mistreated them in a transaction and you walk them through it, sometimes you might want to act in a uh, disorderly way, but in, our, in a professional atmosphere, you just can't do it. You've got to be able to put out fires. You've always got to be able to find kind words to work around, you know, like never excel. I mean, excel. I mean, make anything where it just takes off and it continues to get worse, man. You just gotta always be the peacemaker, and you gotta just know your business. So I would say the the hardest thing is you gotta be a peacemaker. The best thing is shit, the time freedom, man. You get to be your own boss. You know, you get to make your own time schedule. If I want to work from two to five a.m. and then sleep all day, I can. If I want to work from three, you know, three to p.m. or whatever, I can. I put it to work in order to have that type of schedule. And uh, I'll say that's one of the biggest pros. And I remember I remember one of the things that stood out to me when I really chose to go into this lane. And um, it was a commercial. It was a commercial of uh, Little League All-Star Weekend. And the little kids was down there. They was playing and a storm came through. Their parents was there. Everybody was there. Storm. Parents was there. Everybody was excited on that Saturday when they got ready to play. But a storm came in and they canceled the game. So the kids were not able to play. Well, the yeah. Day they rescheduled it, and uh, the kids that was actually playing they won. And so the, the 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 news anchor at the end was like, "Hey, why you crying? Y'all just won." The kids said these magical words that I was doing. He was like, "Well, my mom and dad had to go back to work, so they weren't able to be at my game." And that always wasn't clear to me because I'm like, you know what? If I create my own lane, if it cancels and I gotta reschedule something for a Tuesday, I don't have a boss telling me that I gotta miss in order, in order tonight. And I'm not knocking works. I believe jobs is important. Everybody got to do what we do. But for me, that's what run clear for me when I wanted time freedom. Already. Yeah, time freedom, man. Flexibility. Flexibility out here. Oh, yeah. Hey, fellas, it's important. Believe me, it's important. Again, like I said, I think that I think entrepreneurship is one lane, but I think that as you build up the cash flow in order to get ready to do it, it's more important. Than just jumping out there. I know Steve always said jump, but I'm like, man, you better save up some money before you jump. Get invested in some stock markets or something before you jump. So, yeah. Do you say you be, would you say that you became good at real estate be, because you were good at communicating and just being the people's person? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I, well, I yes, I would say because communication is everything when it comes to, when it comes to because people doing business with you because of who you are, not because of the brand that you got backing you, not because of the knowledge you think you got. They doing business with you because they like you. So believe it or not, I don't even like people. I'm an introvert by day, honestly. Like you know, um, yeah, I, I think that when the lights come on, I know how to show up and, and be ready because of my athletic background. I think being in the athletics really gave me that that lack of fear. Like it's like, okay, when the lights come on, you might be nervous, but you gotta be ready to perform. And so I think that um I think that yes, one of the skill sets is just being a people person. You can be as knowledgeable as you want to, but you really need to be a big people person when it comes to uh, or at least a like people a little bit when it comes to real estate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so what do you feel like the ultimate vision is for Brooks and Davis real estate? Man, look, this year we're planning on, we're, we're at 55 agents and about 26 affiliates right now. Um, so oh, yeah. affiliates are, are people that are, um, I appreciate that, brother. Affiliates are, um, fi- pe- affiliates are people that are in school right now that just haven't passed their exam or they're studying. So they're part of our affiliate program, but we're really working with them to help them study for the exam and to actually get it passed and stuff. And then our 55 agents, we're looking to turn that, we're looking to double that count. So we're looking to add about another 50 to 55 more agents to get to 110 by the end of the year. And uh, on the pace that we're going, it looks like we're going to get that at number. So, man, we're just excited to train new people, man, to, to come in here and make a difference. And we we all over Texas. So, you know, we focus mainly in the Houston area, but because of the way that you're able to Zoom and you know, do things like stream yard, we're able to touch people in other markets and really coach and teach them how to do the business as well. Already, so you expanded outside. Of, so you expanded outside the borders of Texas as well with the no, 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 no. I don't need to leave Texas. And the only reason I say that, I, I got someone asking me about that today, and I was like, Texas is just beautiful, man. Like we still got, we got the most land to build out. Like we got the best price points when it comes to houses. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna branch outside of Houston, but mm-hmm. so maybe Austin, Dallas, and those areas. Dallas next, I think, because I like that their price point. Uh, but but uh, as far as leaving Texas, man, it, if I get a license somewhere else, it'll be Atlanta, and it would only be because I got a few new relationships down there, and I could probably make the license pay for itself while I'm going down there to have fun kicking it with my homies. So that'd be the only reason. So I can go down there and have a good reason to kick it. To be there on a business trip, but still have a pleasure. Hey, hey, you know what I mean? Ain't nothing, it's nothing like that's what it's funny because that's what got me into public speaking. I got into the public speaking room because I was like, man, people, I, I, I would love, I love to travel, so I'm like, I would love to be able to travel and get paid to do it. So then I started doing public speaking because I could be at a conference or be at an event, having a great time traveling and enjoying excursions, but then being paid to be there. So that's how I, that's why I even got into the public speaking thing. Show. Yeah. Uh, one thing I did learn about any uh any market that's basically in Texas, you don't really have to leave Texas to excel and, and make a lot of money. Like yeah. Texas is one of those like self sufficient states. Like whatever market it is, whether it's the music industry, you know, yeah. real estate, whatever you're doing in Texas, it's like it's, it's a lot of affluent people there. Yeah, man. No, it's facts, man. I mean. Everyone's coming to Texas. A lot of people keep saying, I know a lot of people, we got a lot of people that's relocating from even Atlanta. They're like, man, I'm going to Texas because even Atlanta prices are getting a little too steep for them. So, I mean, we get 250, we get 250,000 new people that relocate to Houston alone every year. And so, I mean, man, with that being said, it's just the sky's the limit, you know, and and I'm excited about it. You know what I mean? I'm in real estate, so I, I want everybody to come. Just come on. Yeah, you you want to more potential clients, right? Two hundred fifty thousand yes, clients, indeed. potential clients yeah. every year. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right. The more the more clients, the more people I can teach and train my agents how to close, man. That's what we're trying to do. Yes, indeed. Thanks. Uh, since you mentioned training, what what courses and training opportunities are offered at Brooks and Davis Real Estate? I know you got into a little bit, but let's get a little more. Let's get deeper in that thing. Okay. So with us, man, we do everything from teaching our agents how to take a phone call. Because believe it or not, if you've never taken a sales call or a call to turn a client into a turn a customer into a client, we teach you how to do it. We teach you scripts. Uh, we do everything. We, we, we have a training module, but we really focus on coaching, man. So what a lot of people don't understand, the difference between coaching and training is 
I can train you and send you stuff all the time and talk to you about the business, but it's your job to take the steps. But coaching that we specialize in, we specialize in coaching for part-time and full-time agents. And the way that we do it is we hold your hand. We keep you accountable. If you tell me you got a dollar amount you want to make a month, a year, we're going to, we're going to hold you accountable to get to that dollar amount. And so we help them, we teach them how to do social media. Uh, we really teach them how to go out and network, man. So, like, I'm big on my foundation got busted wide open when it came to networking, man. So we big on be teaching them how to network and stuff like that, man. So if, it's, if it comes to real estate, man, we cover the whole game. And, again, the reason why we're so successful at it it's because myself and my business partner are always teachable and, and are always touchable. So if you teachable and you coachable, we can we can teach you this business and you won't ever have a problem getting in contact with us because the broker's firm is headed by two brokers. Oh man, you're making me want to go get my license. Let's see. I know, hey. right? <laughs> it's funny because everybody gonna get in. I always tell people everybody gonna get in this real estate game, regardless of how life go, you gonna Either rent an apartment, because we get paid off of that. You're going to buy a house. You're going to wholesale a house. Or you're going to get that real estate license. I'm going to teach you how to sell a house. So it's, it's, a, it's all kind of ways to be a part of this thing. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, fellas. So what would you say is the most rewarding feeling about being a realtor and a broker? So far, man, the biggest reward I've had, man, is... I had one of my agents, uh, Rose Johnson, uh, Kalima McCord. These are agents that came under my broker's firm, allowed my, myself and my business partner to teach and coach them, and they went out and started their own broker's firms. And so that's the most elegant honor that someone can ever have because they allowed me to come in, teach them, coach them, train them, and then they were able to take the same knowledge that we gave them and go out and build their own business, build their own broker's firm. And so... I shout them out all the time, man. I love them. Um, we all still participate in some of the same. They still come to Brooks and Davis events. As they build out their brokers' firms. Whenever they have an event, I go and I support them. So, man, that's the biggest honor that I've had being in the real estate game, man, is just being able to teach and coach somebody to do what I do and then be able to do it at the same level. Because that was my, that was really, again, that's why I got started, to bring more people that look like me into the industry and to help them get the bigger platform, man. So to be able to do that is it's been a true, true lesson for me. Oh man, that's major. That's major. Yeah, right? I feel it. We yeah, man. People, we got we got some of our people in the comments saying they want to relocate to Houston and do some real estate. Like you, you dropping the gems for real. Like, hey man, it's a, it's an ideal time, man. You can't go wrong with it. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I love it. It's changed. It's changed my family dynamics, man. Like I said, I was the first person in my family to go to a four year university and finish. But more importantly, that I was a, I'm really the first really stand out when it comes to, to, to the way that my family lived. The one that's gonna like live leave stuff for generations. You know what I'm saying? Like I got my I got my son and his kids on rock, and now I'm working on the kids after that. So it's it's, it's just that's how important it is to me. Yeah, yeah. So you feel like y'all y'all will how soon do you think y'all be the largest independent black owned real estate brokerage in the country? Listen, look, facts, here's the facts. <laughs> you know here's the facts. Fact, real talk, black independent brokerage firm, we already are. I just ain't been shitting on people like that. I just been trying to let them because I know Texas is I I got Texas on lock because I can look at the stats. I can go to our um I could go to our um um our governing body and i can see the number i can see what everybody has in their brokers firm so mm -hmm. i can see that through our governing bodies but the u.s i can't really tell but based on our numbers we participate in uh what's called NARAB, which is the national association for black real estate brokers right and when we do the survey on all of the brokers firms that support in NARAB, which is all of them because it's it was a there was a first NARAB was the first company in 1963 that allowed black people to actually do real estate. We weren't able to do real estate with white people. We had to do black real estate with black people only. And so that's why we started that association. And so doing the research through that association, ain't nobody got our numbers still. So independent black owned brokers firm, I'm really rocking the whole country, like you said. But you know, I stick to Texas. I ain't trying to, you know, hurt no business. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying, I ain't trying to have people in my real big mirror trying to catch me. And then I really start doing work, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> but great, great question. Yeah, yeah, you know we coming with the questions for seven. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, said, don't be humble. I'm trying to be humble. I'm, you know, <laughs> listen, it's hard. It, being, being in our culture, it's hard. Not, it's hard to. You have to be humble because our people look at you a certain type of way when you feel like you're not. So you know, I ain't trying to, I'm trying to grow. You know. Facts. Yeah, man. I was I was thinking about something earlier, man. I was like, um, one of the things that I dislike, I hate, I'm a frugal guy. Like, I don't like spending money on, on a lot of stuff all the time, throwing away cash on this and on that. And in our industry, when I first got in our real estate industry, you had to buy a nice car. You had to wear the suit and tie to really look the part. Why well, culture didn't do business with you. They didn't trust that you made enough money to know what you was talking about. But now that I'm at the level that I'm at now, I'm like, listen, I'm going to put my pure hustle hat on, put my pure hustle tee on, and I'm going to come meet with you. I'm going to talk to you. And if you, if you, and if my, if the D, if my 20 years of DNA in this industry don't say something to you, you're not meant to work for me anyway. And I'm going to keep it moving. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's too many, it's too many people. It's funny because one of the other things is when everything started popping off in 20, uh, 2020, and we had all of these racial things hitting the things. Uh, hitting the, the media and stuff like that. I went back and I looked at my clients. I done closed over 2,000 deals, tons of them, myself. And so I went back to look at my clients base and over 97 of my transactions were people that look like me. So guess what that's telling me? That means that, okay, cool. I do business with uh, with, uh, with other cultures that need me, but for the most part, I can rock and roll with my culture and I'm still good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Growth is firm off of what that looks like. Now, we're open-minded to bringing in everybody because we got love like that, and we love teaching people. So that's really the foundation. But I felt, I figured out that I don't have to have my hands tied because of it, you know? Yeah, I yeah. feel you. So so what do you feel like are some important factors that um a person need to possess in order to be a successful realtor or a successful broker? Yeah. You know, what would I say when it comes to important? I would say... Because everything can be tied and trained. I think that I think you can all. I think that as long as you don't have a problem with opening your mouth and just letting people see people that are unsuccessful in real estate is because they're shy or they don't like to tell people that they do in the business. You can't be a private agent or a secret agent, as we call it. <laughs> you know what you do, it, man. Believe it or not, I've been in this twenty years, and every year I send out this same text. It says, um, uh, "Hey Steve, you have ten minutes to help me. Two minutes to help me out." It's a quick text message, or I might DM it to people. Um, don't worry, in the future, you guys are probably going to get it. Maybe not this year, but next year. But I always send out the same little message. It says, hey, hey, Steve, or hey, Donna, whoever the name is, do you have um, do you have 10 minutes to help? Do you have two minutes to help me out with something? Who do you know that's looking to buy, sell, and invest in real estate? Man, all you got to do is send that message out, and people are going to want to help you. They're going to send you business. They're going to say, well, you know what? We were just talking about real estate. Or Jane was just telling us she want to be an investor. Oh, you know what? I was just talking to my niece and she's looking for an apartment because we get paid on apartments too. So it's just, it's it's not hard to drive to pick up the business as long as you're not afraid to tell people that you do it. And, and with my company, you're never alone, right? So like I'm holding your hand through the whole process. When you join my team, when you sit down and do your first meetings, we're doing those meetings with you. And, when, and even when we're not there, all you're saying is your team. So don't go in and say, well, you know, I'm KT, the realtor, you know, I can help you. No, it's not KT, the realtor is, hey, I am KT, and my team is Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. We are going to help you out. You know what I'm saying? So we make it larger. Jay Rich. <laughs> Jay Rich, man, I'm looking forward to you coming on the podcast. I watch your podcast on here. She killed it. You made you made it hard on me. She coming back <laughs> soon. Coming back soon <laughs> for that second quarter pressure. Yeah, Crazy yeah. Girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to uh, KK from Social Irresponsible. I see you up in here too, t- tapping in. You know what I'm saying? They out of San Antonio. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. For sure, for sure. All right. So you was talking about the you getting paid off uh, apartments. Does the apartment locator service frequently deal with corporate leases, or can you elaborate more on the process? Uh, yeah, well, see, the, so back in the days when, so corporate leases have always been around, but usually what would happen is you would have high-end apartment complexes, so you would have Exxon, Noble, or AT&T, who are these big corporations was, they would send people from other, you know, states, maybe Georgia, and they would stay in for like 90 days, so you would do like three-month leases and things like that. 
now they're becoming more popular because people are starting to use them for Airbnbs. So mm. if your business is set up your LLC, you can reach out to apartment complexes and ask them if they do uh, long-term leases. I mean, not long-term leases, but if they do business leases like that. And then you're able to put those on Airbnb. So a lot of people get tied into the point of thinking that you got to own an Airbnb. You don't have to own a townhouse or own a condominium or own a house. You can just do a lease like that and, um, and just make sure that you're responsible and you can lease it out to people like that and still get Airbnb money. For sure. Right. That's that's a, that's definitely a... Hey, just, hey, look, for those <laughs> who don't know about that game, just not let your boy. If it's real estate, I know it. Like, I mean, I don't do as much of the investing as... I, I do more passive investing, so I'm more of a private investor. So when, when people come and they build in projects, I towards their projects, like, uh, and they just get paid back a percentage, but um, going out and watching a flip, I'm not doing it. And I'm going out and doing wholesale work, I'm not doing it. Because those are jobs. Like, flipping is a job. Wholesale yeah. is a job. But passive income in real estate is not a job. So, I'm more on the passive side of it, of real estate income when it comes to that part of it. But let it be known, though, you you had to work up to that point. I don't want the people to feel like they could just get in and, and get on that level, right? You got to work. No, no, no. You got to get You got to with the passive part of it. You just got to get money. So if, it could be people out there literally that just they got jobs. They got nine to five jobs, but they, they've they already invested the maxes they can do into their 401k. They got they, they are, they IRA already maxed out. And then they got like 20 grand laying around. Because I always get people to ask me, um, Man, I got an extra 10 or I got an extra 20. What can I do with it? You really can't do much of it, like flip wise or, uh, you know, investment wise. You can let somebody else hold it to do the project and get paid 10 to 20% off of it, which is good money because ultimately, hell, this is hard even for the stock market to pay you 20% a year on your money. So if you get somebody that you do a deal, you put money into their project and you get paid 20% off your money, and the bank paying you that. And again, it's hard work doing it through the stock market. I mean, it's easy. It's not easy money, but it's easy money because it's real estate. Ultimately, the value is going to be there. So even if they don't close and sell on the very day that they tell you, it's going to close and sell for the value. It's real estate. Facts. So like with the corporate lease, do you like if somebody <laughs> come to you trying to find an apartment complex that does corporate leases? Are you able to locate those as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're able to find. Yeah, we're able to do corporate, uh, corporate leases. We're able to find them because we have a system and we have a system called apartment data services. They've been around as long as I've been in the industry. Because when I first got in the industry, apartment locating was the biggest part of my business because I was young. I was only 21, 22 years old, so I didn't know a lot of people buying houses. Matter of fact, at that age, look, the average age of a realtor is still to this day was a 58-year-old Caucasian person because real estate in the past was always someone's second job. So people was, I was getting into real estate as my first career, and it was everybody else's retirement job. It was a pilot. It was a teacher. And then they were just like, I want to get a real estate license because I can do that. And they make a lot of money. And so um, for me, apartment location was number one because I could do apartment location because all I got to do is send you a list. You go look at it. You put my name down and then I get paid. And so apartment locators can, I mean, I got apartment locators that's making, you know, five to 10 grand a month just invoicing the apartment companies. So this is, that's another lane if you just, or if you shy in the beginning and you really don't want to go out and physically show people houses you don't feel like you got the right ride just do a apartment okay run a few ads and do a apartment okay man it's money in it yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love it man listen hey for y'all that are tuning in don't forget like and subscribe to this youtube page 1409 podcast we're giving away a hundred dollars out of my pocket out of my cash out to five people uh well let me say that correctly because i don't want y'all getting in my guy now we're going to do a pop, right? So $20 a pop. Like, subscribe to the page, leave your cash app in the bio, or in the comment section, leave your cash app, and then randomly my guys going to pick it. They're going to pick some people, and we're going to cash app some money. I'm going to cash app some money. No doubt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're sure. we going to put it in the wheel like we did earlier and then uh, spin the wheel and down. Uh, boom. Okay. Yeah. Even better. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You want to do that? That's cool. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, I'll just copy them from the comments and do it like that. We can make that work for sure. Let's do it. Oh man, uh, those that the gems right there. You got, you got, you got any other advice out there for the listeners and the viewers? Any, any other advice you want to share? Any gems? Man, let's see. Um, 
That's a great question. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I would say um, when it comes to real estate wise, guys, um, service is everything. You know, one of the fastest way to grow any kind of business that you're in, I don't care what it is that you do, but it's service, man. One thing that was a secret to my success when I got into, when I became a realtor, I joined the Houston Area Urban League. I joined the 100 Black Man. I'm a member of Capital Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Man, if there was service involved in it, I joined it or I volunteered. And so people love working with and helping people that volunteer, man. When you give your time and your service, um, people want to pour back into you and people that can make connections for you. So the biggest thing that grew my, my business, my real estate business so quickly was, you know, me being able to make those connections. Um, I would also say, man, get up early. Like, unless you got a, a night job or you got a, you know, you work late. If you got a regular nine to five or you work in a nine to five schedule, get up early, man. Get up at like 4.30, five o'clock in the morning. Do something healthy wise for your body, right? Do, say, you, say some work. Quotes, manifest. People sometimes play down how manifestation can work for you, man. I swear to God, I'm from the hood, man. None of the things that I'm supposed that I got right now, I'm supposed to have, man. I manifested this stuff, and I always used to tell my partners. I used to say, people always try to try to and they'd be like, man, you rapping about stuff you ain't got, shit. But then you look up a year after they've been in the game, they've been rapping. Everything that they say it because they manifest it, man. They think about it. They talk about it. I mean, you got to, and, and, and so I don't want people to, to overlook the ability to write things out and manifest in their plans, their victories, right? Those things are real, man. That's coming from somebody straight out of South Park, that, a, a cat that used to be, a cat that went from being a dope boy to doing his thing in college and, uh, and now doing this real estate thing. And um, yeah, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's what I got right there. Hey man, much love, man. Listen, I feel it, bro. We we need yeah. more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We need more people, more role models, especially for our youth, man, to drive them in the right direction. Man, I'm I'm, I'm gonna drop one more gem, man, just because I this is how I'm feeling right now. Not not a gem, but I just want I want people to understand that your circumstances of where you at now, especially if you're young and you're youthful, man. Where you at now doesn't have to be in your picture, man. I'm a guy that I didn't always do the things, I allegedly did illegal things, right? I allegedly, um, one of the things I remember starting in, 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 in high school, I sold candy, right? And I'm just gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you this because it's gonna give you an outlook on how my how my brokerage firm is set up. So in, in high school, I sold candy. I got good at it and I had other people selling candy on the other hallways for me. And I got so good at it and, and, and we'll, lose, we'll use candy as candy, so we, Alleged, we, allegedly is one of our favorite words on this show. <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. So, I allegedly sold candy, right? And so I became so good at it to I had other people when I was in class selling candy on the highways for me, right? Because one thing that I, I became, I started, to say, I got away from hard and got into candy because I could still go to school because I was still good at football. And I saw my homeboys was like, man, people talking about you in the newspaper, you need to go to class. Like, so I got focused on school and I would sell candy in the hallways, had other people selling candy for me. Got to college, ran into some tough times because my grandmother needed some money. And you know, I was on a full scholarship, but they don't really just give you a whole lot of cash. That, you spell it, you get rid of that, uh, that uh, Pell Grant, it's over with, you know. And so I used to, I had to find ways to send my grandmother back home money. And so I started selling candy again. And so allegedly people was helping me sell candies throughout the dorms and stuff around the school. So again, I was able to build that business. And now as a real estate broker, one of the largest independent brokers firms in Texas, but really the country, um, I have people that sell houses in replace of candy all across the city for me. So the business model was learned as a youth, and it just got implemented as an adult, stronger. Facts, man, love it. Love yeah, to see so, it. Yeah. Opportunities out there. What's up, PJ? PJ was a lumberjack with me, man, number thirteen, and he played for for the Atlanta Falcons for a while. So I went any one of my frat brothers. I see PJ now, man. I love PJ. He's always looking out. Hey, show, sure, sure. show. Shout out to PJ out here, man. We can yeah, rock yeah. We see you in here. Yeah.
All right, let's get into your books. You you uh you're an author as well, full time author. Yeah, well, three times. I, that's gonna be one of my special projects I'm working on this year as a as, as a fourth project. But uh, manifestation. Seventeen, man. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Listen, it's, at, at some point, man, what I learned as an entrepreneur, you just kind of when you get bored or you find a way to master one lane and you you build enough people around you because I couldn't do none of the things I do right now without the people around me, man. I got a great business partner. We got a great staff, a great team of agents that we work with. So they gave me the time, freedom to go out and start other ventures. So my very first book was the Entrepreneur um, Entrepreneur Quotes, Empowering Quotes. So this was in, it's more of a quote book. So I came out with this one just, again, to work on manifestation so that you can really think through things, so things to give you wisdom and energy throughout the one. So that was my 2007 project. And then every, that one I did. I did great numbers on. So everybody was like, man, come back with something new. And so that's when I came out with the Entrepreneur Code. And in this book, I talk about how I built the real estate company step by step all the way up. And, and it's for any entrepreneur. So if you if you want to build a business, this is the secret to how I built the one of the fastest growing real estate companies in the state of Texas at that time. So this is the steps on how I built that business. And then last year, I dropped this book. Now, I actually co-authored this book with several other agents, I mean, several other people. Great people in different lines of works, everyone from pastors to uh, Grammy and I, uh, Grammy Award winners. And so this one we called the uh, Footprints of Success. And so I just, in this one, I talk more or less about the Pure Hustle brand, the brand that you see me rock, rocking. I talked about, you know, just the accumulation of all the businesses and just always being, putting, the, putting together the hustle, but more in a smart manner. So we smart hustling now. It's no, it's no, it's no longer a negative term that we use. On, on getting over on somebody. So now the hustle is us doing it smarter and more intelligent. And so um, I talk about myself, uh, my business uh, my business partner, uh, Danjo, that I got the Pure Hustle brand with. We got a t-shirt spot out in Pine Park still. And then we got online. So um, that's where that one came from. And then the one that's, I didn't like this one, but this one is the most special to me. And I'll tell you why. This one is called Successful Tendencies uh, of Real Estate Champions. And so this one is so special to me because there's nothing like getting one of the highest awards that you can get from your peers. So the, the young lady that wrote this book, her name is Rita Santa Maria. Uh, she's the founder of Real Estate Champion School of Real Estate. It's been around almost 30 years. The largest real estate company in the country. Most agents go through her classes, I mean, go through her school in order to get trained to become a realtor. And so to be chosen and, and for my story to be a part of this book, to inspire other people and to know that I'm one of the only, I mean, I'm there with people that are doing crazy numbers, people that are like Mattress Mac that have just built, you know, conglomerates and, and been moguls forever. But to be one of the, to be the only in two volumes of this book, to be one of the uh, only African Americans in this book, man, and to just really be a pace setter, that is important to me. So that really just kind of stands out to me. So um, if anybody's ever interested, you can go to shop LWB. Dot com. You can find the books there. You can also find the Pure Hustle merch. Again, that's shoplwb.com, man. You'll find all of those things that I have to offer. Appreciate that, man. That was a great question. I love talking about that stuff, too. <laughs> For sure. So uh, out of your published books, which one would you say is uh, more significant to you? Man, I would say... Um, you know, I would give the energy to... I would give the energy to the first one. Only reason I'm getting energy to the first one is because it was the one that let me know that I was loved. Because there's one thing when you offer a service to people, mm -hmm. but the thing when you're not offering a service, but people still want to support you. And yeah. so a book was a way of doing that. Like, you know, for people to give you 20 bucks and say, hey, you know, I support you. I want to be able to build your brand. I'm going to buy five or six books because I want other people to see what you got going on. I trust you. And um, I want other people to be able to trust you, man. That was the that was the biggest one to me. So I would say number one. The other ones are just me putting in the work and just trying to get other, trying to get other people to the next level. But um, that first one was the one that really allowed me to feel like people loved me. He gave me, he gave me, he gave my flowers while I was here. For sure, for sure. Well, we got to get our flowers while we're here, right? Hey, man, this is Sometimes important. we don't do that, but you know, it's important to give. Like you say, it's important to give people their mm -hmm. flowers while they're here. My 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 dad used to say, "Give people their flowers where they can smell them." <laughs> Real talk, you know, give, give, give people their smiles where they can smell them, bro. That's yeah. whatever, man. Like especially in times like now, man. I always tell people, you know, social media is a gift and a curse, right? The gift 
of it is that us as African Americans, people can't bullshit us no more. Because I was, I'll give you an example. In Clubhouse the other day, I heard somebody say something like, I never knew this existed. Because they hide everything from us in a book, right? That's what they, that was a going thing. It's like, you ever want to hide something from a black person, put it in a book. And so yeah. they, they believe that we don't read and stuff like that. And so in Clubhouse, that's like the cheat code. Now ain't nobody got to read. They just got to listen to somebody else tell them about the things that they read or the game, and now they, you know, they can get to the next level, man. And so that's that's one of the secrets. Because I always tell people, man, like, The 48 Laws of Power, one of my favorite books. Man, it's a great cheat code. You get into The 48 Laws of Power, you'll learn how to have a conversation with anybody and make sure and, and everybody feel like they win. And so, man, yeah, yeah. For sure, man, hey. Knowledge is power, man. You gotta, you gotta Knowledge read. I, I, um, I became excited when I, once I started reading more. Like coming up in high school, man, I used to hate reading. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I think part of it was is I didn't know why I was reading. You know what I'm saying? For like me, I was always smart and could like pick up something. So I'd be like, man, I don't gotta read it because I hear it and I'm, a, I'm gonna remember it. Yeah. But as I got older, I understood why I'm reading. And you know yeah. what I'm saying? That changed the way I looked at reading. I understand yeah. that now I'm reading for information that because when I'm hearing something, I'm just hearing someone's interpretation. But yeah. if I read it, I can get my own interpretation and even, you know what I'm saying, expand my knowledge even more yeah. of what I interpret from it. So now I love reading because I'm reading for information. Yeah. I mean, that, bro, this, I tell people, even because I want people to understand a lot of times we got long commutes. Even if you're not physically picking up a book to read it, audio books, man, audio books are amazing. And you can consume so many, much information and you can take notes. It's say like I'm sitting here with you. I plug my audio in. I'm taking notes, man. When a, you know, and books are so powerful because now you can say, oh, that's why Gary V. do what Gary V. do. I read his book and I see how he moving. Or look at 50 and you're like, damn, that 50 smart. 50 just came out with a book called Smart Hustle about about, about six months ago, now it was a while back, but that book was good, man. I listen, I'm just like, yes, bro, yeah, that's why we do it. Like this, like we done changed the game of the way to hustle. You look at 50, and you like, he was just a rapper out of Queens, New York, man. He everything now. He a mogul, and so you know, you take those books, man, and you manifest those things because as you put that information in you, you gonna it's gonna you gonna regurgitate it, and you gonna tell other people about it, man. So it's gonna be remanifested inside of you, brothers, no doubt about it. Eek facts. Yeah, man. For sure, for sure. You gotta you gotta do the, the, the 1409 signature right there. For sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, for sure, for sure, man. Yeah. yeah. CB. That's my little brother right there, man. I grew up with him. He he just seen everything. Hey, shout out to bro, man. Clarence. Yeah, big CB. shout out. So uh how important do you feel like networking is in your line of work or networking in general? Just networking. How important is it? Man, networking is everything. Think about it, brothers. The way we met was, was networking, right? We networking in the clubhouse, the relationship that we built between Annie, Jay Rich, Tristan, like those relationships have allowed us to get to this point, you know, whatever, whatever following or friends that I've had through social media that I've pushed in you guys' directions. And the vice versa, like those have become our network, man. That's gonna allow us to grow. Buku, we're gonna look up 10 years from now on whatever, whatever my private jet got me at at that time. And then <laughs> be chilling, you know what I mean? So I think I think networking is everything, bro. We can't you can't get you can't get ahead, in my opinion, without it. So I think that is key, man. Yes, indeed. For sure, for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Networking is key. It's key, man. What, what you got planned for the near future that you haven't mentioned already? So uh, I would say two things. So I have a nonprofit. It's called a Grandparents Love. Uh, a Grandparents Love. Uh, it's called a Grandparents Love. It's at uh, grandparentslove.org if anybody wants to check out the details. But it's a 501c3. And, um, and I was raised by my grandmother. Like I said, she was the first entrepreneur I ever saw. And so the vision that her and I used to talk about before she passed away was just a way that uh, people can help grandparents. So the nonprofit, we help people, we help grandparents when it comes to help subsidizing some of their bills, you know, in the season, in the summer seasons here in Houston, the electricity bill goes up. And so grandparents that are taking care of their grandchildren, they got to choose between buying food or paying a $400 electricity bill. 
So a grandparents love, we come in and pay that bill for them. We try to help them subsidize or at least take them grocery shopping. Uh, we've had cases where some of the grandparents that's raising their grandchildren have refrigerators that went out and we've had to help them replace it. And uh, man, it's just really about being, because for me, I remember being that kid and my grandmother not having the resources to take care of certain things like the roof work um, or repaint the house that was being, that, that was deteriorating. So um, my vision is to be able to be that for grandparents that are the custodians for their grandchildren, man. And also trying to mentor those young ones um, so that they're not going in the wrong direction so that I could be that to catch them and be like, nah, man, take, look at my blueprint. This blueprint is doable, man. If I did it, you can do it. And and so that's that's what a grandparents love is big on. That's my main project for this year. Um, and then again, they're doing a co-authoring book. So I'm going to be looking for people that want to become authors that may be too afraid to do it themselves. And man, we're just going to break down some chapters and it's going to, and I'm thinking I'm going to call the book Master the Hustle. So I'm going to find people in their different lanes of business and we're going to get together and master the hustle. We're going to, we're going to, uh, I'm going to talk about another business venture that I got that's coming up. Shout out to Rich, but then, uh, some other stuff that's going on too. So we we'll put some other people together, <laughs> you know, with some things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell you, uh, don't stop, man. Can't stop, can't stop, won't stop. Like, did he say? Hey, what Jay Z say, man? I'm a businessman, not a businessman. We say, yeah, you know, so shit. we just trying to keep them coming. Facts. All right, so how, how many times have you been on a, a podcast as a guest or been interviewed as a guest? Man, I think I don't keep up with it, but at least 45, 50 times. Quite yeah, a few. Yeah. yeah, quite a few, man. I, like I said, like the biggest way you can't say no. Like even with you guys, when people get to asking you to do podcasts together or separate, man, you just can't say no, man. You got to, well, I say you can't say no, but review their platform first, right? See if you can find the trusted value in it. Like when I immediately, when I clicked on y'all podcast, I was actually already aware of it because I seen Terrell on there. And uh, Terrell Vaughn is a good friend of mine. And if she trusts and vetted the company to be a part of it, it's an easy go for me because I trust her. And she, you know, she don't deal with a lot of people, man. She she very close, really loves helping people. So, you know, just seeing her on here, I, I looked at the episode with uh, Brian J. The, um, uh, Brian, I think it was, I forgot his last name, but. Oles. Yes, the public speaker. Yeah. And man, I met him at actually one of Terrell events when I accepted an award. Um, as uh, at the urban CEO that she hosts, I accepted an award one time with her. Um, so yeah, man, when the podcast opportunities come, man, it's like a public speaking engagement. You got to get, you got to build your network, so you got to continue to get out there and get people, man. That's kind of why I attempt to get on stages at clubhouse, but you know, I'll be honest, man, the old school club code of talking and all that it still kind of troubles me a little bit. So I try to get up there as much as I can, but the only room I really like. Is hello Houston. The rest of the room, you know, because hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I get up there because I'm an expert in real estate. But so I, so I deserve to be on the platform. But it's hard for me to be like, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? I got a company that's worth ten million dollars. I can sell it and be on a private beach. Like I ain't that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like I still love people too much. I ain't, I can't give it to people like that. Yeah, hey, yeah. Shout out to Hello Houston for real, because that's 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 how we like yeah. made a lot yeah. of these connections, especially in Houston. That's our biggest audience on Instagram right now, and we not even in Houston, so that that yeah. tells you something right there. Yeah, hey man, these social media platforms be crazy because even me and you meeting KT the first time in the airport, man, that's crazy. It is same <laughs> flight, same flight. <laughs> that's great, and end up sitting by each other, man. What's that, man? That's a universe. Man, that's that's when you pop you made you manifest alchemist. Uh, the people around you, man. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's alchemy, the alchemist, right there. Hey, <laughs> one of my favorite books is The Alchemist. Come on, man. I'm, I'm telling you, that's one yeah. of my, and the other one he got. He got The Alchemist, and then he got another one that he did, The Orange one. I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's an orange book, but it's a good one, too. Yeah, yeah man. This is meant to happen right here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so you watched a few episodes. What's your what's your favorite episode of 1409? Uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Teria's only because like she was fighting and Teria's not playing. Y'all give her a chance to talk. Teria gonna run the show and she 
is amazing at everything that she does, man. She has a tremendous amount of accomplishments. So I, I really enjoyed her show. Like she did. She she came on and she was her. She was she she gave y'all the energy that she carries into her day to day business. So I really enjoyed her show. I like the make it was a makeup girl show too. I can't remember what it was. Um, but I liked her show too. I can't think of can't think of name right now. But she was a makeup artist, but she was real good. Oh yeah, shout out to Nicole Swanson. Yeah, she was. Yeah, that was it. Nicole Swanson, uh, Jay Rich brought the energy. Shoot, man, you can tell people getting that money, baby. You can tell. <laughs> was on here. You know, Andy be capping on, but Andy, but look, Andy got about that money that I seen I was like, yeah, it's it's live, man. Y'all got some good ones. Yeah, yeah, more to go. This is a good one right here for sure. This is monumental, sure. monumental. Right yeah, this is one hundred, baby. We got to do it as big as we can, man. Y'all go like right yeah. this page, man. We get these numbers up for sure. Yeah, yeah, make sure you subscribe to Prime Real Estate Network on YouTube as well. Now, don't y'all forget that either. For come sure. on, Thanks. come on. Appreciate that shout out, brother. Appreciate that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Who'd you like to see on fourteen oh nine in the near future, though? Ah man, you know what? Um, uh, my guy PJ is a good person to have on. Uh, PJ is a good one. Um. My guy, my guy Rick D, uh, he's a, he's the co-host for me on the, the Prime Real Estate Network. Mm-hmm. He, he's different. He came in, he grew up here in Houston, then he ended up spending a large amount of time in Vegas, and then kind of made it back to Houston. So he has an amazing story. Um, a collegiate athlete as well. But yeah, between him and PJ, man, those are good guys, man. PJ gonna bring the energy. He gonna bring that 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 old NFL experience. How he got out, he's still winning. You know, a lot of times people think because you went to the league that, you know, you're going to be destitute. Mm. And one of my best friends, man, Cole, one of my best friends, he he uh, he left the league, man, and whenever we hanging out, he'd be like, yeah, I retired. Now, mind you, he's 40. So when they'd be like, you retired? like, yeah, I retired a few years back. And they'd be like, but you played in the field, so you got to still be home. I mean, you still got to be broke. He's like, no, I just got one really nice house, one really nice car. And so with my pension, I got. I keep everything really nice. I don't got no. Ch- I don't have a reason to have five cars, five houses. He said them the ones that ended up losing everything is everybody that want to have five houses and five cars. So I like it, man. For sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, we with yeah. that. All right, yeah, Mister Where you got that question of the day? Yeah, man. The question of the day is. Uh oh, hold on. Let me get this drum roll. I don't know. I'm kind of nervous. Let me get this. <laughs> would you uh would you rather be able to control time or be able to know what other people are thinking? Jeez. Ah. Uh, damn, that's a good question, man. Um, time or what other people are thinking. All our live listeners, feel free to drop your answers in the comments as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? I'm gonna go with knowing what other people are thinking. Because if I can, if I can justify what other people are thinking, I'm ahead of the curve already right there. So I can I can manipulate time just based on knowing what other people are thinking. So I I, I want to know what people think. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with that too. You can down. You can steal their ideas. That's, that's, that's the first thing I think about. <laughs> hey, hey, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Hey, I'm going to just get to you straight up. You can steal their ideas if you know what they're thinking. No See, doubt, PJ. You're welcome, bro. See, um, I would want to control time because somebody could invent something right now, and it's a good idea, but I can control time to go back when it wasn't invented and invent it then. You feel me? You know That's what I'm true. saying? So I don't want to control the time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> let, me, let me pose a question to you guys real quick, because this was going through social media for a moment. When they were talking the blue pill, red pill thing, right? So uh-huh. blue pill, you can get, I think it was like, I give you $50 million and you'll be $50 million and you're 50 years old. Or you can go back to, I can give you a red pill and you can take all of the knowledge that you have now and you can go back to 10 years old. Which one would you guys take? I'm going back to 10. <laughs> yeah, I'll say I'm going uh, to go back to 10. So, and so this is 10. This is not 10. This is, So for me, and it's crazy because when I answered the question, it was, I said I'm going to take the 50 because I know how to, with the knowledge that if they just gave me 50 at 50, I can flip $50 million and never have to worry. My generations would be like, 
team, right? The reason why I chose it and not to go back at 10, because 10 wasn't good for me. Ain't nobody going to listen to my team in my hood. Now, if I was 10, I came from a two-parent household, and I had parents that was in, that were influential, and they're going to listen to the ideas that I'm going to give them about being successful, I could do that. But when I think about my personal experience, at 10 years old, ain't nobody listening to nobody out of South Park telling them nothing. So I'm going to take that 50 grand with the knowledge I got now, and I'm going to flip it. You're going to flip it. 50 million? Yeah, 50 million. At 50 million, man, at 50 years old, 50 million? Bro, that's a, you dropped, you could have dropped that on Tesla and she, you ain't never got to work again. Well, 50, <laughs> you ain't never got to work again, but. Yeah. Drop that, drop that on Bitcoin, though. You drop that saying? on Bitcoin. You drop that on Bitcoin and worth March of last year when it was 18 bucks, bro, listen. You know, and I'm just guessing this. So you can, you can always drop it into an ETF and it pay you out a million dollars a year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's three million and three million dollars pay you. If you put three millions in a, in a little old nine months, seven months, it'll, it'll pay you out almost two hundred grand a year, one hundred fifty grand a year. But that, that's kind of like the question that we asked a couple of times on the show. Uh, well, we asked it, and I think a guest asked it. Would yeah. you rather have uh, what was it, KT? Like the eight hundred credit score, two hundred acres of land, or, or two million dollars? Uh, two hundred million dollars. Yeah, some shit like that. Yeah, something, something hey, along those lines. Twenty. Hey, I think it was twenty million. Twenty million. Twenty million dollars. Two hundred acres of land or eight hundred credit score. So if I'm a credit person, I'm gonna say credit. But when I when I since I know the value of twenty million dollars, I'm gonna take the twenty million dollars. Hell, I would take a hundred thousand dollars because I know how I know how to flip a hundred thousand dollars, right? Like I can I can pay for credit with a hundred thousand dollars. We had a you know what I mean? So I mean it's just because I now if you had asked me this question twenty years ago, I probably would have been puzzled puzzled or I would have been like, man, yeah, just go get a couple of keys. That's what I would have said 20 plus years ago. Go get some keys. But as an adult in the business world, I look, I listen, I I got the mindset on how to flip that. Facts. I would I had said the uh the land though, but we, we got into a technicality about like where the land would be located. But you know what I'm saying? It, it's like, yeah, location, location, location. But at the end of the day, hey, the land, yeah. the land, land generates wealth, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna it always do that. Thing. No doubt about it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. See, this is like this or that right here. So we might as well get into this or that. <laughs> Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was some this or that right there for sure. But uh, what, what this or that y'all got though? Like, what? what? Which I had some. I had some. But we started having like good, naturally good conversation. Yeah, we don't uh, down. Yeah. We're gonna be right down. We're gonna be writing that shit down. We just be thinking of shit on the random. Yeah, yeah. So. Would you rather, so, so retire on a beach or own a private jet? Well, say say the first one again. Retire on a beach or own a private jet. And then age doesn't matter. You can be young, you can be old. You get to you know that's not important. Just do you want to own a private jet or or, or rely or, or retire on a beach? Let me get that private jet, dog, because I can fly to a couple of beaches. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that fuel though, that fuel go got to be. <laughs> If, if I if I got enough money to retire with a private jet, I'm pretty sure I could pay for the fuel. Let me let me get that private jet now. <laughs> hey, it's funny, man, because you know that what what happens, brothers, is you get to a certain point to where you get you can once you find financial freedom, it's just kind of like life is real easy. You don't even think about retirement. You be like retirement. I don't want to retire. I want a private jet. And I can just I can go somewhere, kick it for a day, or hang out on the island for a day. And then come on back. Like, I don't, don't want to just be sitting on somebody else's time as, you know, stuck on the beach. Like, I'm going to fly to the beach, have a great time, and then come on back. So, um, yeah, it, it makes all the difference in the world. I remember me and a friend of mine, K-Dub, in uh, 2013, I don't know, I just did a good job at investing. I saved up a lot of cash. And in 2013, man, we would just take trips to, like, Miami for the day, have some lunch, kick it, and then fly back to Houston that evening. Or either, um... Uh, or either D.C. do something. One time we went to D.C., uh, hung out there, and then flew back or flew to Chicago. Like, it's just the things that you could do if I had a private jet, bro, when I win, when I get my private jet, this is going down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, multiple places down. in one day. You do multiple places in one day for sure. Hey, man, listen. I've sure. been before without the private jet, so I'm looking forward to it with the private jet. I owe $10,000 
thousand fuel. I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay, so I, I got a I got a good this or that for you, Mr. Brooks. Going going back on what you already accomplished in life right now. Would you okay. rather uh have that NFL career or that career in real estate? You know what? I, I think the NFL career was a childhood dream. And it was amazing because a lot of friends of mine actually did make it. But I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say the real estate career. And here's why I'll say it. Don't, let, don't judge me. People out there don't judge me. I'm still able to financially stand on couches, travel when I want to, <laughs> do what I want to do, pop bottles when I want to pop bottles. Anyway, like, Ultimately, I still get to do the same thing that, that a lot of cats that played in the league are no longer able to do. The same cats that I was standing on couches with when I was in my early 20s when I was getting real estate money, they not next to me no more. You know what I'm saying? And not even that, and I'm not just saying that, I'm using that as a reference of what we what we determine money looks like. Yeah, yeah. We determine status, right, at times. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that those, like, right near my homeboy, I got a homeboy, man, a good friend, my, one of my best friends, he's an air traffic controller. And so we laugh about that. We like, we've been getting this business money or this entrepreneurship money or this, this work money so long, we still capable of doing everything we was doing when we were youthful, like we was running through our career to lead, but we still, go, I'm still, I have to still go to Vegas and live how I was living in my twenties in Vegas and a lot of those cats came. So I'm going to take where I'm at now with the time that I put in, Matter of fact, matter of fact, G, I'm gonna tell you this, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going over time, but I gotta say this, right? Even taking the time that I played, I took to play collegiate football, man. It stole a little bit of value, right? Because here's one of the secrets that that gets misconstrued when you go to college, right? You go to college, but you're really not getting the knowledge that you could get if I just skipped it. Like if I got my real estate license at 18, it just went straight into real estate. I'd be, I'd be waiting somewhere else, right? My private jet, I would be fueled up two or three of them because I would be so far in advance. But I can't take away the experience. I love the experience. You know, like I said, I got a chance to be a frat boy, you know, play sports, you know, thought around and all that there. So I can't take away from the experience that I had. But just to say that career-wise, success-wise, you know, when you choose to go to college and you don't do, uh, you're not picking a profession that's focused, like, an accounting or financing or, um, you know, something that's really focused that they are an economist or something that, you know, that you have to really have a degree for, you know, you really lose a window there. So, you know, I lost a window of, of, of entrepreneur productivity, you know, when it came to, to, to going to the university. But I, you know, I got a 14 year old son, man. And, and I told him like, look, college is something that you're going to do if you, you know, if you, you 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 got a scholarship you playing ball or you know you want to be a new for something like that but if you know you choosing to be an entrepreneur brother we're not doing it. So, hey, GMs longevity real estate got the longevity and you, you have that wear and tear you yeah. have that wear and tear on your body either. You I was, was going to say the same thing. You ain't got the <laughs> yeah yeah you, you can see you ain't got the head injuries that everybody coming up with nowadays but. Cause it's not easy for everybody to flip it. I've been blessed to be around a few guys that was able to flip the game. Like, you know, PJ was able to flip the game. He got it. And now he's amazing. He's able to do business stuff like nobody I know. You know, my homeboy Cole, he was able to, he spent his five years in the league. He got his pitching, but he was able to flip the game. He, he owned real estate and all of that stuff. So they was able to really be around the right people and still have their money working for them. But outside of them, nah. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take real estate. And you're gonna take real estate and allegedly fuck your couch. Already. They're jumping standing on couches and shit real over there. I'm telling you. <laughs> hey man, listen, hey, it just is what it is, man. It, it's it's always a running joke with me and my people. Matter of fact, shoot, I might get a little bit in tonight, man. I got it's something, it's something to celebrate somewhere. Man, I'm celebrating y'all 100 episodes tonight. Hey, hey we appreciate hey, it. Yeah, yeah, we appreciate that for sure. We celebrating too, somehow, some way. No, no doubt about it. No doubt about it, fellas.
I'm about to I'm about to post some of this buddy love. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little corner left in here. I do that. Shit, uh, go, Mr. Bros, go ahead and plug your business ventures in one more time in your social media before we before we bring it to a conclusion. Right, and hey, beautiful people that have had an opportunity to sit in on this podcast with the humbleness inside of me, man. I want to thank these gentlemen for really just you know lifting their platform. Allow me an opportunity just to express who I am, the things that I've been able to build, and the way that I love people. And with that being said, um, you can find more about the real estate company. If you go to LarryWBrooks.com, I'll links that you can click on. You'll be able to either purchase the books. You can, um, you'll be able to see more about the real estate company, set up an appointment to actually talk more about real estate, and just really if I can help change your lives. Also, with that link, you'll be able to see um, we have uh, the organization of Grandparents Love. It's uh, grandparentslove.org. You know, please feel free if you want to support the organization and make a donation, please feel free. Or if you just want to check out what we got going on and come out and give us some of your physical labor when we help you repaint houses or change our hot water heaters and things like that for, for our uh, grandparents that have de devoted their lives to their grandchildren as my grandmother did. And of course, the Pure Hustle brand that you see me wearing, man, we got everything from baseball tees, these tees, hoodies, um, Nike, the sweatsuits like the Suits, red, black, all kind of colors. Go to shoplwb.com. Take a look at those things, man. And, and I mean, I'm just a young entrepreneur in this business, man. I'm trying to find financial freedom for my family and just continue to beat it up. So, man, so I just I just thank y'all. And again, I'm humble to be here in front of you and uh, just have an opportunity to express what I do. For so sure. We definitely glad to have you, man. I know, oh, yeah. I know it's a long time coming, but that is yeah. the right time. It's the 100th episode. No doubt, man. Listen, that's special to me, man. That's it's special to me. So, you know, we're going to get everybody squared away and everything, man. For sure, yeah. man. I'm a, uh, I'm about to get some of them track suits, man. And, uh, you know, springtime coming up. So I want a couple of them uh, them baseball tees. I'm going to go ahead and hit the shop, lwb.com, and get right with the pure hustle. Hey, man, the pH is real, baby. It's, hey, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a life trend, man, and I appreciate that, fam. I do. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, you know I'm going to shop with you, too, man. No yeah, doubt. I appreciate you, brothers. You'll see us on IG with the merch on real soon <laughs> on our episodes. <laughs> hey, that's what it's all about, man. Like, 100 episodes, man, it's just about continuing to build up on that, man. Continue to get people in, get the right like-minded people in, man. So, the sky's the limit, man. The product that y'all Y'all are putting out is amazing, man. Everything looks good. Y'all are promoting it the right way, man. So just continue to get on get on stages and, and get in front of people, man. Let them know. Appreciate them know. that. Appreciate yeah. it. You, you know what's crazy, uh, KT? What's that? And, and Mr. Brooks, I ain't even, uh, I was invited to be a public speaker to talk about uh, starting a podcast. And we, we only been doing this for eight months. It don't matter. Once you did it, once you did it, once you did it after two days, you know the challenges that come with it at this point. Now you can talk. Yeah, yeah. Even if you just talk about your streaming service that you use, you ain't got to worry about talking about Apple and all of other ones. Talk about the one that you guys use because actually this platform is very, very good. So, man, you talk about this platform and, and the, the the organic, the other organic followers of people and connections that you get from it, that's what's important, man. So, again, don't be turning down. No opportunity to be in front of people. We build y'all building the brand. Everybody needs to know it take place, man. Everybody. I, I, I said hey, yes. <laughs> I don't even want y'all coming on this show no more without y'all merch on y'all chest. We're outside of the time y'all decide to peel, be put to put peel us on. Outside of that one time, y'all need to have y'all merch on every time y'all do this show. Hey, say no more. Say no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, hey, look, I don't care if it's the same shirt. Ready to <laughs> y'all shirt on this show. I got a few of them. I just gotta get some more. Come on, man. That's it. I'm telling you. We're gonna send you the link to cop our merch too. Yeah, yep, yep. Send that, send that link, man. I'm gonna show you how to lock it. I'm gonna lock, I'm gonna lock it. Sure. Oh, I'm about to send this shit right now before I forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right now. The, uh, put it in my uh, put it in my IG. All right, I'm about to do that. Yeah, drop it in there. Uh, you know, you can find us. We on Nobody Grinds Like Us Network. Always press record TV, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, what else? Pandora, our Hot Radio, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Tap in with that. Follow us on Instagram, 1409 yeah. Podcast, Twitter, 1409 Podcast, Facebook, 1409 Podcast. If you're watching this right now, leave us a review on Facebook. 
Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, an honest review at that. You know what I'm saying? Tap in. You can follow me on Instagram at 843 Ambassador. Yeah, yeah. Also, man, at the end of the month, we're doing the PS5 raffle. Make sure y'all go to our Instagram page to follow the instructions on how to get in on the PS5 raffle. You know where to follow me on IG. It's your boy Gualamit Swirl at Gualamit Swirl. Tap into the music on all the streaming platforms as well. Yes, sir. All right. We bold, boisterous, and blunt. Well connected, well respected. It's the 1409 podcast, and we out. Peace. Peace. Yeah.